Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Lauren Cohen, the host of Investing Across Borders, where we teach you how to invest, live, work, and play across borders. I'm an international legal and real estate expert, and today I'm here with my guest and dear friend, Jen Duplessis. Now, Jen and I met on the Marketers Cruise. Why? Because we are marketers. Everybody's a marketer at the end of the day. And Jen is a mortgage expert. She has been in the mortgage business teaching and training and learning and helping and investing for so many years. And she is just an awesome wealth of information. She is a mindset expert as well. And I'm really privileged to have you here today, Jen. She also happens to run a mastermind that I am part of, which is her first mastermind that she's facilitated. And it's going really well. She has some lovely people in there. So Jen, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Lauren. I'm delighted to be here today. I appreciate you offering the opportunity for me to share. Well, anytime, you know, I think that what you're doing is making such an impact in the mortgage industry and so many other spaces and just pulling together some people and developing this mastermind, which a lot of people don't even understand the value of a mastermind, which I'd love to discuss because masterminds yeah. go across borders. Masterminds yeah. are investing across borders because you can work with people, especially now since yeah. COVID started and we realized with all the Zoom and all the tricks that you know about Zoom, <laughs> we can really mastermind with people from all over the world and yeah. make a huge impact for them, with them, and so on. So Jen, can you just give us a brief introduction to who you are and what you do? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for asking. Um, so as you had mentioned, you know, I've been in the financial services space for just 38 years. Um, we, I, we just crossed over that line a couple of weeks ago, <laughs> um, just 38 years. I'm no longer in a mortgage origination, so I'm not actually in the mortgage business anymore. Uh, but what I do is I coach um, and support real estate agents and mortgage loan officers, uh, you know, who feel overwhelmed and stressed out and dealing with a lot of chaos in their daily uh, lives to really calm that down, calm that down and realize that they could have lifestyle business. Um, and what I mean by that is that a business that uh, they are controlling rather than the business controlling them and, you know, really helping them uh, master their priorities so they can master their life on their way to multiplying their their results. So that's really what I'm doing. Of course, I have two podcasts, I'm multiple author. I have two books in the works now and about ready to start a TV show. Wow. And, um, I mean, it just goes on and on and on. And uh, I'm just loving it. I'm just loving where I'm at now. And I'm being pulled to serve in different ways. And um, that's really what's what I've been up to. I don't know how I'm keeping up with me. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about the TV show. I didn't know about that. Yeah. So, well, I'm, ha I'm writing a book right now called tell me I can't. Mm. And the name of the show is also tell me I can't. So I interview people um, of all shapes and sizes and backgrounds and everything across the globe uh, who've been told that they can't do something and they've overcome and persevered. And so we're in pre-production right now. We're going into studio May 1st. So by the time this is released, we will hopefully be um, already public or out in the, you know, launched out into the world. And uh, yeah, but there's a cut, you know, a couple of things. Uh, my book's being written for uh, a Hallmark TV show. Wow. So it's being written in a way that'll be uh, hopefully delivered on a Hallmark TV show. And then this TV show, uh, you know, hopefully will be picked up by Netflix, um, you know, sometime in the next year or so. That's, that's our intention. So I've got some really cool backing and, um, you know, I mean, we're going big league on this and it's not... Um, it's not for money. It's not for ego. It's not for fame. It's for how I serve. And you know enough about me to know that I'm very much a servant heart. And I just want to be able to share that story because I was told so many times that I couldn't do something. And I want to share other stories just like that. It's especially true. And I hate to say this and I hate to play this card, but it is true because we are women operating in a male dominated space, you know, and you I mean, yeah. it's, it's, a, it's been, you know, you know what I do. I deal with foreign nationals. I'm working in this very, like, especially when I was doing EB5, everybody at the table was men and yeah. they look at you and they're like, what are you doing here? And, yeah. I, and, and, and it's yeah. that, 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 that story is true because they think you can't. 
Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's, that's exactly it is we're told, you know, and so many people, I mean, I'm interviewing people that were told they can't because of their race, because of their physique, sure. uh, because they aren't smart enough, because they're too tall, because their shoe size is too big, because their shoe size is too small. <laughs> uh, I mean, there's just, it, it's just absolutely endless. And I'm looking for great, great stories. We've all been told we can't, um, but I'm looking for really, really good stories and um, you know, and I think this is going to resonate with so many people. Um, we have some really wonderful people, you know, Brian, Brian Smith, obviously, you know, the founder of Ugg. Brian's going to be on the show. Um, and I'm so excited about that. James Dentley is also going to be on the show, uh, Dr. James Dentley. And, um, gosh, I mean, the, the, it just goes on and on. There's just a normal everyday people. And then people that are pretty famous. We're exploring all parts. Yeah, I, I can't tell you how many times, especially being an immigrant and um, being through people don't, first of all, people don't think I'm an immigrant because I don't look like an immigrant. I don't necessarily, unless you say out, sound like an immigrant, but I'm an immigrant. <laughs> or or process or process. Process, right. Process. But, you know, I learned early on when I first came here and everybody would, everybody would make fun of me saying sorry. I was like, okay, I'm not going to say that anymore. Right, so, right. I don't, but it's, it's really an interesting thing because people do prejudge you and yeah. they, you know, you've been yeah. in the industry 38 years now, 38 years ago, the picture oh, was not yeah. the same for women for sure. No. As it is now. No. no, absolutely not. And I, and I feel, you know, really privileged and honored and humbled that I was one of the main women that, that created the beautiful path that other women have now in this industry. And um, in fact, we, we all wrote a book, 12 of us, 12 women that have been in the industry and really been the pioneers for everyone, um, wrote a book called Win or Learn, um, you know, instead of win or lose, it's win or learn, the naked truth. And we talked about our experiences in a male dominated industry, you know, and how we overcame so many different things over years. So, um, yeah, it was a really fun, fun uh, multi-author book. You know, and that's yeah. what I'm working on now is another multi-author book. I like it's, those. Yeah, the book of acronyms. We're going to call it the oh. three-minute challenge because, um, you know, in three minutes, you can have a cute a cute little or not cute, but, a, you know, a challenge that is heartfelt, spiritual, business-oriented, um, a full book of authors, you know, contributing the acronyms that they use in their businesses and um, and what it means to them. So we're excited. Well, it's, it's, it's brilliant. I mean, you've definitely been a trailblazer in your industry and for women and that, you know, I'm greatly appreciative of that. And I, at the same time, look at her, look at this beautiful woman. She's been in the business 38 years. She has grandchildren. You can see them on Facebook. It's a fact. And, and <laughs> it is you know, but it's a fact. And, and she just keeps going and keeps, keeps building and keeps impacting. So Jen, I wanted to ask you, since this podcast is about investing across borders, yes. and I know that your investing is domestic, but yes. you work with investors or people in the mortgage space from many, many countries. I'm sure Canada yes. is obviously, for, for, for ease of access, obviously one of the big ones. Tell us a little bit about how that looks in terms of working with different cultures and people from different countries. Do you approach them differently? What, what do you, how are your thoughts on that? Yeah. Well, I mean, my, my level of experience with investors, you know, across borders is that, um, you know, I, I find it's very unique to learn the terminology. Number one, the terminology is quite different. Yeah. Um, some places it's very similar, but, but most of the time there's some little uh, idiosyncrasies, you know, to them. And, and really the way that people invest, uh, you know, for example, in Australia. So I was, um, I met a gentleman, um, his name is Goose, <laughs> let me see if I can say, it. Goose McGrath, Goose McGrath. And he is a real estate agent in Australia. And funny thing about real estate agents in Australia that, that is totally unique and different from what we here in the United States look at is that, you know, if you're a real estate agent, you can be a listing agent, you could be a selling agent, you could be a rental agent, right? There's all kinds that you could be commercial. You have all of the, these uh, different ways that you can in, uh, work with clients. And he is a, um, a buyer's agent. And in Australia, it is like 1,000 to one or 1,000 to a half that most agents are listing agents. Really? Oh, listing um, And very few are buyers. Agents. Yeah, it's really the craziest thing. Wow. 
But what makes him even more unique in that is that all he does is work with investors, which is right down my alley, right? All he does is work with investors and he works with them um, with coming up with a, a whole plan, an entire plan to build their entire portfolio over the period of time that they want to build it. So he he works with them from day one saying, I'm your guy for the next 25 years. When let's talk about how we're going to buy and when we're going to buy. Um, and so you have this person that you can latch on to for your entire investment journey and yeah. growing your wealth. And I think that that was, it's just the coolest thing in the world. And so my interview with him on one of my podcasts was just really, really good. So that, you know, I would say that's, you know, probably the most unique thing is finding out how people uh, operate, you know, their right. businesses operate. It's very, very different. Um, what is globally equal is Airbnb, which I happen to be an investor in as well. Yeah. And, um, you know, so I think that that's kind of the, the common thing that I see. Got it. Got it. So um, when you're, you mentioned about kind of this whole holistic approach that this person in Australia has, which is walking them through and being their partner, is that domestic within Australia that he's working with them? Yeah, it is. And here's what's funny is I have shared that idea with many a realtor here <laughs> saying, hey, have you ever thought about that? Because, you know, I yeah. find that real estate agents, in, at least in the United States, um, they are very focused on first time home buyers, move yeah. out buyers, you know, that type of thing. And, um, you know, in the lending space, one of my niches was investors. That's that's something that I work on um, primarily. And I still have. Um, I'm no longer licensed to be a, a traditional loan officer, um, but I had started a company called Black Fox Investments uh, many years ago, just out of my own need, because I don't qualify for anything. I have too many properties. Um, I can't get anything. And, and if I do want an owner-occupied loan, it's a nightmare, mm -hmm. right? It's an absolute nightmare for me. Um, so out of my own need of needing to find outlets and resources, I started a separate company. And so when I couldn't serve a, an investor in one arena, you know, in the arena of the traditional financing, I was able to serve them in a different arena. And I still have that company and I still serve investors for a multitude of reasons, you know, that they do um, with that company. And um, so I went out to a bunch of realtors and said, hey, how come you guys aren't doing more investor stuff? And look at the way that McGrath is putting this together. And one of the things that's great about him is that he's willing to share his system with them because, um, you know, this gives you annuity income. It's annuity yeah. income. That's so, so important. And that's- yeah. And it differentiates you, right? Pardon me? It differentiates you from the commodity. Yeah, yeah. yeah. EXP, I'm sorry. Um, that 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 aff affinity income like that yeah. ongoing that yeah. passive income is something yeah. that realtors just don't have they're yeah. like lawyers too they're, yeah. we're, we're equally as guilty you know now maybe more lawyers set up retirement funds but one thing that's common among realtors is they don't have that ongoing access yeah. to income and if yeah. they're not in the in the investment world if they're not no investing, it's transactional exactly it's yeah. it's not so so one of the things that i would would kind of bring to what you're doing is working with investors is I, lo I love working with investors I work with them every day I don't work with buyers and sellers other than through referrals um so but I work with foreign investors so yeah, it's kind of right. like my big fat Greek wedding you replace yes. it with whatever and foreign yeah. investors can be the best market to focus on because yeah. they they are loyal you're not yeah. searching for the first time home buyer. They're usually coming to you with a significant, you know, asset base, and they're going to look at these opportunities and be loyal. And yeah. loyalty is so hard to find in this country, but yeah. it's not so hard to find in many other countries. Yeah. So it's, yeah. it's just, it's really, you know, it's about, I think, kind of uh, yeah. And I think, you know, I do think that there's loyalty in our country when it comes to investors, because when, you know, again, when you can latch onto someone who you yes. feel confident in and you know, that is the go-to person and is well connected. Yeah. Um, I think that's, that's critical. And I, and that again is why I, I tended to work in that investor community because yeah. they wanted to do it again. Let's do it again, again. and again. Right. Let's do it again. <laughs> 
right? Yeah. And, and they're also doing it multiple times a year. It's not like yeah. it's once and then they stay in the house for five years and then they sell right. it and they buy a new one. Right. It's right. like they're doing this on and on and on and on. And right. so that's a really, it's important because a lot of people are afraid, especially of foreign investors. One yeah. of my talks is don't be afraid of the big, bad foreign investors. They're really not so bad and they can be your best friend. Yeah. So yeah. they can yeah. be your best, best friend. Um, tell me a little bit about what prompted you to develop the mastermind. Oh, the mastermind. Um, well, it's actually not my first mastermind that I'm running. I've run Ooh. several of them, but um, but this is the first true mastermind. You know, okay. I think that, that that word kind of gets floated around so much. Um, you know, and of course I've been in masterminds uh, myself for many years and, and especially with Greg, with Greg Reed at Secret Knock, you know, I've been in Secret Knock for a while. And, um, you know, it by itself is a mastermind all by itself. But um, when he came out with a certification uh, to be a certified mastermind facilitator, you know, I've always been a life learner. I have many, many certifications and I do that on purpose because I, I want to learn. Mm -hmm. And when he brought that out, I said, well, I have to be part of it. And I love the structure of it. Um, I love the experience that I've received from it. I mean, it's opened up so many doors for me and so many opportunities and um, really leaning on the mastermind. It's not, you know, one thing about networking is that everybody's out for themselves. I, I, and that's probably the, the biggest complaint I have in networking. And I'm a, I'm a master at networking. Um, yeah, that's for sure. You are. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I am. I'm, I'm really a master at networking and, and I try to grab people and, and it, it's really one of those things where I just want to grab people sometimes and go, would you stop networking like this? Because this is why you're not getting where you want to go. When they're handing because it's all it's, at the back of the it's room, me, 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 really me, care. Yeah. It's always me, 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 yeah, me. What can I what take? How many people can I sell this to? It's not about, Hey, right, and let just, me serve you. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. And, and, uh, you know, I always say go first, like go first in networking, have it be about the other person. And in that, you know, the, the law of reciprocation and the natural law of that will happen. And, um, you know, so I, I, uh, that's one thing I don't like about networking anymore is because I don't like being chased in a room, Yeah. <laughs> right. I'm being chased Zoom in a room, room physical and, and, room, any room. Well, and I'll tell you, Clubhouse is becoming that way for me. Yeah. I, I had to pull back a little bit because um, I felt like I was circling the drain, right? It's it's a, a FOMO. Yeah. But when I got on there and I started talking to people outside of it, I realized they weren't the quality of people that I was looking for. Right. Um, so I'm very strategic in that now. Um, but it was all about me and especially as a podcaster and I have two podcasts, right? As soon as I said podcaster, people wanted to, to meet with me for to their purpose, the right? Not for, not to help me in right. my business, but to just be on my show. And, um, so I just, it's not tit for tat. It is a reciprocation, right? It's a constant, you know, partnership and reciprocation. So the thing that I really, really like about the masterminds is that the people that are in the masterminds that have a skill set in a specific area are givers of that skill set to right. the people in the, the, the mastermind and not at a cost, you know? So for example, in one of the masterminds I'm in, um, this gentleman uh, is an ed a book editor and writer for some of the biggest books we've heard of, mm. biggest, most massive books we've heard of and not in size, but in, in sales. And he said to me, Hey, let me take a look at your entire funnel of emails, all the emails I send out, right? Let me look at your funnel and let me do some editing and tweaking for you. And it was all done complimentary because right. in turn, he was struggling with his business. And, and as a business coach, I said, oh, well, it's, this is a piece of cake. Here's what you need to do in your business. And I gave him value too, but there was no money exchange. And that's what I love about the mastermind. It is giving from the heart and giving from experience. And if you can find yourself in a true mastermind, that for me is your sign that that's a true mastermind. You get into a mastermind and every, all of a sudden everybody's like, well, I'd like to coach you and you can do this. And right. sell, sell, sell. Now, you know. now, you know, yeah. Right. That's definitely, I, I definitely agree with you. And I think that everybody, no matter what stage you're at in your career, no matter how successful you are, you need to be in some kind of mastermind and you need a coach. Absolutely. And whenever Absolutely. I'm interviewed, that's the one tip I always leave with. Make sure yeah. that you 
two things, I guess, stay in your lane. Yeah. I'm not a tax advisor. <laughs> right, right. Ask, ask questions every day <laughs> and stay in your lane and get a coach and yeah. work with that coach. And within that coaching program, whether it's a coach or a mastermind like Jen, who has the mastermind, and then she's also a business coach, you right. can access like-minded people that are helping each other grow as opposed yeah. to helping themselves grow. Yeah. And, and, well, and you don't want to be alone, right? right? You don't want to be alone in, no. in entrepreneurship. And, you know, it's there's lonely. definitely, when you can, there's power in numbers and we know that, but just exponential growth happens when you're in a mastermind. A hundred percent. I mean, in our mastermind, these are all new people to me, except for Michael. And right. already I'm seeing some, some reciprocation and, you know, as an international lawyer, I'm happy to help with anything that's, that's needed at any given time. Obviously there's a point where all of us need to charge for our time, but we, yeah. we want to give because as, yeah. as givers that that's my pleasure in receiving when right. I see somebody growing and, and expanding and, and, and you, you know, yeah. you were also talking about yeah. how the gentleman in, in Australia is holding their hand through the whole investment process for 25 years. That's really what I am about in terms of my clients that right. are investing from other countries or investing into other countries. Because right. when you invest into that country or you invest into the U.S., the investment doesn't end when you sign the closing documents. That's right. when it right. starts. Yeah, that's when the real work begins. Exactly. Well, sometimes, sometimes, I mean, there's some ways that you can invest. It depends on what you're doing, right? Right, of course. But, yeah. Of course. Yeah. But, but there is still, like, there's still, when you're dealing with cross-border stuff, whatever border it might be, there's yeah. always going to be legal issues and tax issues and all, all kinds of things that you need to consider and revisit. And your business plan needs to change and morph. How many of us anticipated COVID? especially Nobody, for no. over a year. I mean, I, I, I have pictures from a day yesterday, a year ago, when I was like, yeah. oh, this could have, this could last for two weeks. That's a really long time, you know? <laughs> right. So, crazy. Right. Anyway. Well, you know, what's um, funny? You know, it's funny when uh, COVID started, I went into a 12 week year. I, th I thought, okay, we're going to be home for a little bit. I started a 12 week year and I, I accelerated my business one year in 12 weeks. Wow. And, um, it was, it was incredible. I was exhausted, but it was incredible. And it Didn't really you also was get sick from the cruise. You were sick as well, right? Well, I think we think we had COVID because yeah. we were sick for six weeks, yeah. both of us with a cough and a fever and that it, that's it. No runny nose, no anything else. And we had a cough and a fever for six weeks and we were in bed in bed. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I think there were about half of, half of our group on our the cruise ship. our group yeah. yeah for sure you yeah. know i wasn't but but craig was and it was yeah was well like, i was sick on the ship pardon me? <laughs> i was already sick on the, on ship. the ship yeah yeah i was already feeling horrible yeah. and uh and i've never been sick on a cruise i've been on 22 cruises yeah yeah never been sick talking about that i'm used to going on four a year who knows when yeah me will, too uh, i'm used to going yeah. on many 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 right yeah yeah anyway jen so um, tell us your, what, when you meet somebody at a networking event, mm -hmm. how do you introduce yourself? Um, well, I do something very, very unique, but I mean, if I were just to do this for everybody, if they wanted a tip, because I, you'd have to go through my coaching to understand what I actually do. Um, and I'm happy to share that, you know, share exactly what I do, but, um, when you meet somebody, you know, and you ask someone what they do, we have a tendency to say our title. And the problem with that is that it's pigeonholes us into whatever that person thinks about that title. Mm. And it creates walls. So for example, if I were to ask you what you do, I know one piece of what you would say is I'm a real estate agent, right? I'm a licensed realtor. And then people, they're literally, their physique changes, right? It'll either be like, oh, I can't afford a house, or it'll be, oh, I bet you're busy, or oh, I bet, you know, it's a nightmare. Whatever their feeling is becomes the wall because they don't see anything else beyond that. So if you say you're an international attorney, they're like, oh, you're an attorney. Oh, can we know what those people are like? And then, oh, you're international. I don't have anything to do with international. So I don't need anything to talk to you about. So see ya. Right. And so the problem is, and we know this in sales, 
is that people work with people they know, like, and trust, right? So I might know what you do. Now I've stereotyped you. I might like you because you seem nice, right? But I will never work with you unless I can trust you. And I can't trust you unless I know who you are, not what you do. And so we tend to walk around and say, hey, I'm a realtor. Here's my card. And then we go, how come I don't get any business? How come they, get, they know what I do? How come I'm not getting business? Because there's no depth to, you know, to that relationship. So when you're networking, it's not to get business. People say that all the time. Well, I, I tried that and I didn't get any business. Most likely you, you screwed it up. You went the wrong way. <laughs> you don't network to get business. No. You network to identify potential partners. Right, relationships. And yep. the only way that you can determine that is to have a sit down and learn who they are Correct. I and agree. find the expansion of what they do. Um, so I tend to never give my title when I network. Oh boy. I'm not going to give my title. I'm, I'm yeah. Gonna, you're afraid now you're afraid. I'm so afraid. I'm not yeah. going to say I'm not, I'm, I got to take it off of here right now. <laughs> Yeah, I don't, I don't tend to give my title. So, so generally as someone, if I'm networking um, in that arena, I've got a couple different things that I use in different arenas, but when I'm networking, uh, I'll tend to tell someone, thank you so much for asking. Um, I'm an intuitive connector. And what that means is that I look for ways to connect clients, people, anybody in their business and in their personal lives to move their business forward or to expand in their personal uh, lives, in their personal lives. And the way that I do that is with a very savvy, vivid imagery in how I present myself. And I lead with being in the know that I am aware of what everyone's needs are. And I, I can intuitively connect those people for the purpose of driving their business forward. So that's what I do. So now so it's totally just, different. And so, yeah. And that, and that but also, all I'm saying is that, I know people and I could do that. <laughs> right? The beauty of that's that not what I do when you're thinking about bo across borders, right? Because if I say, like you said, I'm an international lawyer, well, I don't do international stuff. I'm a realtor. Well, where are you a realtor? But if I say I help people invest in real estate and and help them to find their why that's a different conversation i'm just coming up with that but that's a different conversation yeah. because then you're speaking to what might resonate with them yeah yeah well i think the thing is too is is problem solving you know when when i'm speaking uh well what when i was a lender because i've done this for so long <laughs> right yeah when i was a lender um and people say what do you do what, you know, what is it you do? And I say um, that, well, I got to think of this for a second because I'm trying to think what, what my two words are. Uh, oh, thank you so much for asking. I'm actually a discerning expert. And what that means is that unlike traditional loan officers who quote rate sell products, don't show up at closing, never to be heard from again, I focus my attention and efforts in serving my client to create cash flow and wealth creation through the accumulation of properties. And I do this by being in the know about the market and about everything that has to do with real estate so that I can help guide them through the pathway and be that discerning expert to give them the best options for their mortgage and investments, right? Their mortgage and investments. So, but I can slow that down. I can trim it down, but I know it, right? Um, when I'm a coach like now, Right. I'm known as America's mortgage expert. I help loan officers, real estate agents, and sales professionals who are feeling overwhelmed and dealing with daily chaos, who are self-sabotaging their personal lives for the sake of their business, right? I help them to multiply the results in record time. And I do this through my five strategies to help them be, uh, create mastery in their lives and create lifestyle business mastery so that they can live their legacy while they're building it. So it's very unique and different. Um, and it, what you really want to do is, you know, it's like, I have to be very careful about this because I have a dog here. <laughs> but when you say go walk, right, or you want to go for a ride, right, and, and the dog goes, what? That's what you want to do. When you give your title, you're, it's just a title. Right. I mean, right. I've had plumbers say I'm a plumber and I go, oh, cracked butt. That's what I think. Cracked butt. 
Other people might go, oh, broken pipe. So I guess I don't need you now. Instead of coming up with a unique way of saying that I'm a water solution specialist. Oh, <laughs> That's what's interesting. that? Right. And the only reason I know that is because I've coached a plumber. A water solution <laughs> specialist. I'm a water solution <laughs> specialist. I was definitely a different than I'm a plumber. I'm a yeah, water solution. Go, oh, what the heck I've never heard of that mean? before. Yeah, I've never heard of that before. Right. What do you, <laughs> what? It, 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 it makes your brain think. It actually draws attention and it engages a person to ask yeah. questions and inquire. And that's what you want at yeah. the end of the day. That's what you yeah. always are going to want because you don't, you know, it's like, I'm an international lawyer. What? Now I'm going to think about it, Jen, because I'm going to be recording your podcast in a minute. So I have to change my whole. <laughs> I'm it's feeling okay. under you the gun here. International lawyer. Don't try to change it now. No, I'm sorry. It is what it is. I can't help yeah, it. No, it's good. It's, so it's nice. good. Hey, I'm a lawyer, but I'm nice. <laughs> right. Don't hold it against me. Right. I'm like, when I was first a lawyer, I'd be like, I'm a lawyer. <laughs> yeah. But that all changed. Anyway, yeah. um, Jen, it's always a pleasure to be with you. How do people reach you to learn more and maybe join our mastermind? Yeah, well, thank you. Yeah, for the mastermind, you know, just reach reach out to me. I think in all, all aspects is just go to jenduplessis.com and I know you'll have the link. And um, in there, uh, you can you can submit, you know, an information sheet, a contact sheet to me, and it'll send an email to me and just let me know you're interested in the mastermind. Um, and I'll help you How get How many more spots that. do we have? Four at the moment. Uh, we right? have four spots available right now. Yep. And, and it's a year long mastermind. This is a little different. I did something very, very special. The other masterminds are very expensive. Um, and so if you went to businessboostermastermind.com, you'll see what the normal cost is. But yeah. um, this is a special group that we're doing. And um, so, you know, you can always join that one too, but that I have another mastermind going, but, um, but yeah, just go to jenduplessis.com. And I, you know, I'm always looking for speaking opportunities. I'm always looking for uh, in people to interview on my podcast as well and be interviewed on other podcasts. So um, just looking forward to having that connection with people. Thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate Thank you. you. I appreciate Thank the you. listeners. We are here to serve you and help you to navigate your path to a lifestyle business that allows you to invest, live, work, and play across borders. With that being said, I want to thank my guest, Jen Duplessis, and sign off for today from Investing Across Borders. This is Lauren Cohen, international legal and real estate expert, signing off for today. Thanks again for joining us. Take good care. Bye for now.